In the last class, uh, we were looking at uh, the governing the equation for dynamics. Uh, and uh, we had, uh, in fact, derived a very general expression uh, for a body uh, where the coordinates are centered uh, at its, uh, say, CG location, for example. And that uh, we said this is the body centered coordinates. Okay? We looked at the inertial frame of reference. And we also found out that there are some additional terms that are required, especially when the body centered coordinates, or in other words, which is attached to the body of, say, for example, vehicle. And if it now starts moving, the vehicle starts moving as well as it's rotating and so on, the body centered coordinates also rotates along with it. And hence, certain changes uh, are needed. Okay, some additional terms are required in order that we take into account this motion of the body. Right? This is what we said. And we derived a very general three-dimensional uh, three expression right, for, for this body center coordinates. Uh, you would have studied this in, in dynamics. Anyway, that's a, a refresher. What I'm going to do is that uh, some of the things which you would have studied, anyway, we'll go back and just refresh it a bit so that you will know that I'm going to apply what you had studied before. I'm going to do that. For example, you would have done a course on control systems. I'm going to do that again here uh, in today's lecture. Right. So ultimately, as is usually the case in engineering, you, you, you start with a grand you know, equation and then slowly say that you know, this I will neglect, that I will neglect, this I will neglect, that I will neglect, so that you know, it ultimately becomes, so to say, handleable. Okay? So that you don't lose the physics, at the same time, the equations are simple. This is a usual uh, fact of life in engineering. So we will write that that way okay, for what is called as a bicycle model. So that's the bicycle model which we had just started. Okay? So what, what I told, um, I will please remember what I s said in the last class, that I'm going to collapse the two wheels okay, into one both in the front and the rear. Hence, it looks like a bicycle, so it's called a bicycle model, nothing to do with actual bicycle, stability of bicycle and so on. It's just called a bicycle model because it has two wheels. Collapse the two wheels into one wheel. The result of collapsing this is to reduce the degrees of freedom. Okay? So I'm going to look at this with, uh, or in other words, the equations which I'm going to write down with uh, consists of V and R, where R is the yaw rate, right? So we already said that R is going to be the yaw rate, right? We are going to look at a system where u is a constant. In other words, it's a steady state u is equal to a constant u. We are not going to vary u, and we're going to write down all the equations in terms of v and r. In other words, my differential equation, which I'm going to reduce that, that huge guy, six equations into simple two equations. Okay? So I'm going to write down that equation uh, into i z r dot. What is i z r, r dot? It's equal to tau. It is the yaw, which is perpendicular to the plane of the board. Okay? So for that, I need to put down the forces. So that's the force F alpha R. Let me, okay, F R or F, R, F alpha R. Why alpha R? Because as I told you before, alpha R is the slip angle, and F alpha R is the result of, of uh, this alpha R. In the same fashion, we will put down a force that's acting in the front, and we'll call this as F alpha F. These angles are very small, so I'll make a lot of, uh, again, assumptions there. The whole idea, most of the time, is to, is to bring down uh, the equations to, to a linear range. The whole question in engineering is whether that assumption is valid, whether are you really operating in the linear range and so on. Okay? Sometimes you won't be, 
and that's where your judgment matters let's finish this expressions and then we will come back to we'll we'll take the questions okay now let's look at the front so this is the alpha r this is the uh, f alpha r let's look at the front the front you have i hope this is not a very confusing picture maybe i will draw will use a chalk piece so i have first look at that so that is what is the steering angle i have given okay so that green one is the steering angle okay i have no, this is not i am not steering the uh, rear wheel it's possible to do that there are a lot of interesting things that happen when you you can steer the rear wheel as well for example if you have huge uh, you know vehicles for um, for example vehicles which are used by space agencies you know where they want to transport the the rockets which are to be launched so you would see that there are 32 axles okay or 64 axles huge ones where you can't uh, obviously drive them with only one uh, driven axle or a steered axle sorry so it has to be more than one you know the, the problem becomes very interesting well, let's not get into all that we are only looking at now the front axle steered vehicle so that's the alpha r and the alpha r okay uh, sorry delta r which is the uh, uh, delta f rather or delta okay and that uh, since i have to develop a force note that that force requirement is that the, we i develop a slip angle which i call as call as alpha f right that's the slip angle so with the result that i get the force which is f alpha f okay so let's uh, we can okay we will we'll, we'll keep that as alpha f and alpha r if you want front y and that will be easier this is f front in the y direction and you have a front i'm mean, sorry rear in the y direction either way you can you can call this as alpha r or doesn't matter as long as you understand what we are talking about okay no 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 this is the turning please note that please understand the uh, the coordinate system we are going to take a turn okay this is some sort of a plan view okay you are looking at x and y okay and that's x y and the z is into the ground right that's the that's the coordinate so you are you are looking at a plan view of the vehicle right so obviously f y is, is a centripetal force so this is equal to the moment okay so what is that a into f y front or f y f let's it's easy to call that as f y f because many books the problem why i'm writing like this is because if you follow a textbook then he would have given different terminology you don't understand that clearly f y f minus b into f y r okay y in the rear direction right so what's the second expression it is go back and look at uh, what we had done m v dot plus r u so it's not m v dot because of the body centered coordinates m v dot uh, plus r u and that is equal to f y f plus f y r okay so these are the two expressions we have now i am going to use again uh, the dynamics with along with geometry in order to write down deltas and so on now let me define a new term i hope you will not confused with that okay which i would call as beta obviously there is there is a v there is a u okay and hence vehicle actually moves along this angle beta okay that is the angle beta and beta is called as the vehicle slip angle right 
are called beta as the vehicle slip angle. Obviously, from this diagram, okay, so you have u, you have that angle beta, and so that is v, so tan beta is equal to v by u. Right? Okay. Now let us look at alpha r. Now I have a r, r is now what is r? We said that it is the yaw rate. Okay? So if I have to write down the velocity at the rear, this is the velocity v and u are at the, the CG location. Okay? Hence, if I have to write down the velocity um, at the rear, what would be the velocity? There would be, look at this, there would be a velocity which is due to r, which is b into r, b into r, right? That will be, I will just put that here and then transfer it there. So, that will be in this direction, right? b into r. There will be a velocity which is v in this direction, that will be a v in this direction. Okay? So, b into r is due to r and v is the velocity. So, when you transfer the velocity, it becomes v okay, and br. Since it is in the opposite direction, okay, I can write that as, so in this direction, I can write that as br minus v. Okay, Br minus V and tan alpha R because that is that is in the opposite direction to our coordinate system that becomes divided by U. Okay, that is very simple. Look at that clear. Yeah, of course. Longitudinal velocity u is constant. We are not touching u, so that is the same because the vehicle is moving in the same direction with a constant velocity u. So, in other words, please note this. In other words, when I have to uh, look at u, the variation of u, I am looking at longitudinal dynamics. The first equation in, uh, in what, we, what we did in the last class, we had what is that we have done? We have looked at the first, uh, the first equation in the last class. So, we had looked at the longitudinal dynamics. Now, I am going to remove the longitudinal dynamics. Okay? So, I am, I am saying now that I am going to only look at the lateral dynamics. So, that is what we are going to do now. Right? Okay. Yeah, right. We will, we will come to that. We have, not, we have not looked at tire yet. I am going to have a very simple tire model. Okay? Ply stair, conicity, all those things will come. Everything we will have to then put the model. Just wait for some time. Let us let's finish this. Right? Just hold your questions. Let us let's go forward. Many of your questions will be answered as we go forward. I am going to uh, uh, make a assumption that tan alpha r is approximately equal to alpha r. So, alpha r is equal to v by u minus b into r by u. Right? Okay, I am just going to. So, what is v by u? We had already seen that v by u is beta, tan beta, which is again approximately equal to beta. So, that is equal to beta. Let us let us assume that this vehicle is taking a turn and the turning radius is equal to R, capital R. So, R is the, let us say that R is the turning radius. I will finish this here and write it down there. So, now, how do I write the second expression? r is like omega, u is the tangential velocity, 
So that is equal to radius of that is the r omega r r into r is equal to u. So r by right r by u. So that is equal to minus b by r right. So the first expression of interest to us I will write down here I will do all these things there. So alpha r is equal to beta minus b by r that is my first expression. Let us now look at alpha f is there any questions right I, sim, similar way I will look at alpha f. Which 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 part? No, no, this is the uh, no, 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 no. Please understand that. Let, let's let's just wait for some time. Let's finish this expression. Okay? We'll we'll come. We'll take the questions uh, towards the end. If this, just hold your questions. We will do that uh, later. So just say that. See, this is an R. Okay, R is positive, positive is right hand side, so inside. So you will see that this is the tangential velocity here due to R is actually in this direction. So B into R is in that direction. That is all we have said. Okay. Close that, I mean closely watch. That is why I want put one BR like that and V like this. Clear? Now I have to write alpha F. Okay. So what is alpha f? Look at that. This whole thing is delta, okay, and that is alpha f. So alpha f is equal to delta. I'm, I'm just giving a small gap there. So here, that is br. This is now ar, right? A into r, a into r. That's in the same direction as that of v. So you will get delta minus delta minus that is the AR plus V divided by U. Now, now note that alpha F alpha F is in a direction which is in the negative direction of Z. So I am going to put a minus here. Okay. So I have to be careful because note that a negative direction alpha f produces a positive fy. Okay. So that is why I put a negative so that I am, I am clear uh, so my, I, I do not have confusion. So many books you would see that it is alpha f and when I, when I develop fyf or fy it is just multiplied by c alpha multiplied by alpha. Okay, there is a small confusion, there is no, no, nothing wrong with this, but you have to be very careful on the way you are writing it. Okay. So I am going to write that, I, you will see that I will put 2 minuses, so that I will take care of that clearly, the signs are clear. Okay. Now simplify that, let us say that I am going to simplify that expression. Minus delta minus a r by u okay so that is equal to minus a by r minus beta right so that delta now can be written in terms of alpha bring the delta the other side And then rewrite that expression, rewrite that expression, okay, and substitute it, substitute my this expression for beta, substitute that into this expression, and you rewrite that expression. So, in other words, I can say that when I when I take it delta the other side. Yeah, any questions? R cap note the difference between capital R and small r. I know that but what like it 
signified in this model like smaller capital r capital r is the radius of of this turning you know the turning radius actually let me give a bigger picture you are taking a turn okay so your vehicle is here and that radius that radius of of your turn is equal to capital r right so rearranging the terms this becomes l by r because a plus b is equal to l minus alpha f plus alpha r clear okay now we will come to the tire model there are number of as i told you there are a number of tire models available we'll go only for a simple model because i want to capture the physics of maneuvering so that i will write down fy to be minus c alpha into alpha so why am i writing this as minus because i know that a negative alpha produces negative alpha produces a positive fy okay a negative alpha produces a positive fy so in other words when i put alpha to be negative actually it becomes fy becomes positive so that's why you put a minus there are books which treat this to be negative which is not correct okay c alpha stiffness is not correct so this is a simple model what is this model this is a linear model so in other words we saw already that okay there is a region that's the suppose i i plot alpha versus fy we saw that the curve looks something like this and i'm going to take a linear model where that is the the slope is what i call a c alpha okay so c alpha into alpha gives me fy so this is a simple linear model from here when i put fy front i want i put c alpha f into alpha f and fy r i put minus c alpha r into alpha r clear okay now so that fy now the total fy note that this is a general expression i'm just going to remove it so that you don't get confused so now fy is equal to fyf plus fyr and that is equal to minus c alpha f into alpha f minus c alpha r into alpha r. right that is yeah of course right i'll give you a small job write down alpha f and alpha r we had already derived it if uh, i think it's there um, in that expression so just put that so minus is that so just substitute it minus of that so i'm going to write down completely the the final expression you can you can look at the final expression that is equal to minus a by u c alpha f plus b by u c alpha r into r minus c alpha f plus c alpha r into beta plus c alpha f into delta so that is going to be my fy the second term is this is the second is minus a into c alpha f into alpha f okay 
plus B into C alpha R into alpha R, substitute that so that M is at is equal to minus A squared by U C alpha F minus B squared by U C alpha R. Okay. So, substituting that you get these two expressions. Now, what, what is the next step? What is the next step? I have F y and M z, go and substitute it back into my expression or my Gowning equation, okay. Substitute that into Gowning equation, so I get these are the two equations. Now, what I have essentially done is to write down the right hand side, okay. So, write down the right hand side, I have write, written down the right hand side, and so I have now, okay, substitute that back and write down the complete equation, okay. The left hand side and the right hand side, right. I am going to now, what are the two variables or two degrees of freedom here? R, not U, R and V. R and V. A by R. Which one? Minus A by R. B by R, right? Okay. No, no, I have put R outside. Oh, sorry. I have put R outside, so that is U here. U is fine. R is outside here. Okay? R is outside and that is fine. Now, I am going to rewrite this expression, okay? substitute that and rewrite this expression uh, in a very familiar form. Okay. So, those two equations you know. So, those are the two expressions I mean. So, it is very simple, you know, only thing is you have to be careful in that, in that algebra. So, the first expression now becomes, I do not want to rewrite it, i z r dot is equal to m z, that is the one and that is the second expression. Now, I am going to write this down, I leave a couple of steps to you to do it, this is nothing, in a form which is familiar to you. I am going to write this as V, what are the things that are available there or uh, over my expressions. So, V dot, okay, that is the second expression I have and R dot, okay, those are the two things. I am going to write down that as A, readjust those terms, V, R, right plus b into delta right essentially what is that i have done i have just put that rearrange the terms clear any questions <coughs> nothing no, no no big calculations if I now put that form, you know, when I rearrange it, I am going to, I am going to write that final form, V dot R dot is equal to minus C alpha F plus C alpha R divided by M U. Let me, I think it is good to have that expression this we had i z r dot is equal to a c alpha f minus b c alpha r this is what we write right yeah and m into 
v dot plus r u is equal to f y okay. So, r dot and v dot you know that is what we are we are writing there minus a c alpha f plus b c alpha r by m u minus u that is the second term and minus a c alpha f minus b c alpha r divided by i u minus a squared c alpha f plus b squared c alpha r divided by i u okay that would be my a and v r plus c alpha f by m a c alpha f by i delta okay any questions on this i skip two or three uh, you know simple lines which i think you can fill up now this is a familiar form to you right this is a very familiar form to you what is this form what is this called as state space form okay so this is nothing but a state space form what are the state variables here v and r okay the whole idea of writing this in a state space form is to look at the stability of the system that is the first idea later that we will use this in order to look at the response of the vehicle to dynamic inputs which is the steering input right. So, the first job here is to look at stability of the system. Now, I will take questions any questions? The only thing you have to be careful is C alpha f, C alpha r minus plus whatever you want to use it, it is fine as long as ultimately f y is in the positive direction, right. So, that you have to be, that is the only thing you have to be careful, whatever you do ultimately you will get that expression only. So, minus to minus plus and all that you would get only that expression. Okay. So, now we are looking going to look at the stability of a system. Okay. What do we mean? Yeah. Yes, uh, U is also input, right? U is yes, U is a particular velocity. Okay, it does not change, but it is an input. But it does not change. We are not going to calculate, right? Okay, please do please understand this is a lateral dynamics. So, what do we mean by stability of the system? How do we determine the stability of the system? The immediate thing that comes to your mind when we talk about stability of the system is an eigenvalue problem, right? So, you had studied that in your control system course, and that there is no input the right hand side is equal to 0. Okay. So, and then you the left hand side which is the governing equation right hand side which is the f okay, is put to 0 you go back and solve for the eigenvalues and so on and so forth. This is what you have been doing. Okay. Here also you have to understand this carefully. Now, we are going to do exactly the same thing we are going to put the inputs of to the system to be equal to 0. In other words, in other words, I am going to put delta to be equal to 0. This is the input to the system is equal to 0. Now, there is a confusion. If I put delta is equal to 0, which means that actually I go straight. Now, what is that I am doing? When I go straight and I am putting delta is equal to 0, when we are talking about stability in the lateral dynamics, okay, then what does it mean? Right? That is the question. So, th for that you have to understand what we mean by stability. This is, this is 
usual thing because we are going to apply the concept of stability. So we have to understand what is stability. Even if you are going straight, okay, we say that the system is stable in simple terms when there is a perturbation to the system. The perturbation can be due to some suddenly wind that is blowing or due to a pothole you take a small turn and so on. You know a perturbation to the system you give, the system returns back to its equilibrium position. What is an equilibrium position? The system continues to be in that position unless you it is forced to move out due to an input. So, a, a small perturbation which you give, it gets, gets back to its equilibrium position. Okay? So, that is why you put a very you know, high school example of putting a ball in a well and when you distribute it, uh, sorry when you disturb it, it comes back to this position because you are actually perturbing the ball about an equilibrium position okay, and then it gets, gets back to the. So, that is the philosophy here. Okay. In other words, in other words, you cannot make a statement which I have seen many people making. I am not going, when I, when I do not take a turn in a vehicle, okay, why am I worried about stability of the system? No, it is not true. Even if you go straight, a small perturbation okay, is enough to cause an unstable, to, to, for the system to become unstable. Right? So, keep this in mind because this is going to be very useful for us to interpret the results later. So, we will get into the what is meant by stability, how do you calculate stability and so on. Maybe you have done this before, but we will do that again quickly. Okay? Now, generally, generally um, a system is expressed in terms of a differential equation, okay, which we will say that a d t power n or yeah, we will put that as is d t power n plus a n minus 1 d n minus 1 x d t n minus 1. Okay. This is the nth order system. So, the last term should be available plus a n into x is equal to 0. Note that a n cannot be 0 if you are looking at an nth order system. Okay. This is oh sorry a 0 into many times you write it the other way you can write this to be 0 1 and also as n okay either way you can you do that textbooks follow different procedures you can also write down okay this is a differential equation form the most immediate application if you look at this is in, in dynamics is your vibration equation. You can write it as m x double dot plus c x dot plus k x. Okay. You can also write this down in the state space, state space form which we had written down, okay. which I can write down as x dot 1 okay. in terms of what are called the state variables x dot 1 is equal to a 1 1 x 1 plus a 1 2 x 2 plus so on plus a 1 n x n and then x dot 2 is equal to a 2 1 x 1 plus a 2 2 x 2 plus and then so that x dot 1 x dot 2 x dot n is equal to a x okay, is, the, is another way of writing it down. There are two ways in which you can write down, it does not matter in what way you write down. Okay. If I want to look at the solution of this equation, the solution of the equation can be written as x of t is equal to x e power s t. Okay. That the solution of the equation can be written as x of t is equal to x e power s t. 
this form of equation is valid only if we have certain characteristics for yes. I cannot put any yes. Of course, yes has you know it can be real or imaginary and so on and so forth. We will, we will come to that in a minute. So, this x uh, sorry this yes okay, has a characteristics which you would have studied in your earlier courses and we will see what this characteristics of yes has to be or what should this yes be okay, in order that this becomes a solution to the system. right? Since x is equal to this thing, x of x dot t is equal to yes, x e power s t and x double dot t is equal to s squared x e power s t and so on. Substituting that into the governing equation, we will do that for this case uh, in a minute, right. So, substituting that in that expression. What is that you get? A naught s power n plus A 1 s power n minus 1 plus so on plus A n e power s t x e power s t is equal to 0. Right? Okay. The next step is obvious. We have done this. What is that? For the non-trivial solution to exist, okay, this has to be equal to zero. Okay. What is the trivial solution? X is equal to zero because once this is not equal to um, zero, then X has to be equal to zero, and that's a trivial solution. So, the trivial solution or non trivial solution to exist plus a 1 s power n minus 1 plus a, a n is equal to 0 for non trivial solution. Okay. So, there are Yes is nothing but the roots of this equation. There are n roots, and so the solution of the equation can be expressed as the sum of these roots and so on, right? Okay. Now that's known. Now let us now look at the state space form. Please understand that this is one way. There is no unique way of writing. This is one way of writing the state space. It's not necessary that you will have or you need to follow only a set called x dot 1, x dot 2, x dot and so on for state space. You can have another form as the state variables okay, and express this equation in another form. Does not matter, you will ultimately see that the stability of the system obviously will not be affected by the way you write down the state space equation. Clear? Okay. So, let us now look at how to write this. This, this, is, this is clear, it is exactly now extended here. So, how do I write this? Instead of x, I will write that as x e. EST. Okay. So that x dot now becomes yes x e s t. Substitute that into this expression. Okay, x dot is equal to a x. Yes x e yes t okay is equal to a x e s t put an 
I here, so that which is the identity matrix, right? And so I will write this down as S I minus A into X E S T is equal to zero. Okay, I, this is a, just a revision. I know you you guys know this. Once we finish it, we will go and apply it to this expression. That's what we are going to do. So, for a non-trivial solution for this expression to exist, what's it? What is the determinant of this? That's the characteristic. That's what is called as the characteristic equation. And so, the same condition for non-trivial solution to exist. So, the determinant of S of i minus a should be equal to 0 or else okay, that is simple or else if it happens to be non-singular then obviously you will get end up with the tri only the trivial solution. Hence this has to be equal to 0 and that throws up values of s, yes. yes. No, S1, S2. No, that's that's what that's what we are going to get now. S1 and and S2. We are not. We are we are looking still at stability. Okay. We will come back to other quantities a bit later. Okay. We are still. We have not solved for S. We have not found out the eigenvalues yet. We are still looking at the equation for stability. What is the condition for stability? Right. I have not solved it yet. Yet for S1, S2, and so on. Right, for this. That's what I'm going to do now. First, I let me look at the stability of this equation. Yes, yes. yes, that's what I'm saying. Yes, okay. I have not, I have not yet solved it. I'm just writing down. I said that there is S1 and S2. That's all. What are they? I have not yet determined them. Yeah, so we will S1 and S2 will there will be two roots. You know, just wait for a minute. Let's finish this. We will we will look at that. You know, uh, that's what we did here. I wrote this. If it's a second order system, it will be S squared plus. You know, that will be that, that's why that's what I said that there are n roots. Just wait. J just wait for some time. Okay, let's first finish it and then we will go to the stability. So now that is the determinant of 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 that system is to be should be equal to 0. Okay. Now, what I am going to do now is to express, I know what is A, that is A, that is A, right. What I am going to do is to substitute that A here and expand it and write down and write down some quantity of s squared plus some quantity of s plus some quantity is equal to 0. What are those things? We will do that in the next class just quickly so that you do not have a confusion as to what I am doing. Right? So, I am going to write this down like this. Right, then look at stability of the system. That's what first I'm doing. So look at stability of the system. The stability of the system, for for which an expression governing the characteristic equation is like this, is given by a very simple criteria, Rhodes criteria, which states that what is here should be positive. If I call this as A0, this as A1 and this is A2, the necessary and sufficient condition is that A0, A1 and A2 should be positive. Okay? So, that is the first thing I am going to do. We are going to do problems later 
okay, to look at the transient analysis and so on, then we will see, we will rework this out and see how I am going to write down expression of e power at, uh, uh, you know, a matrix called e power at and so on, we will do that later, right. Okay. So, the, uh, my first step is to find out a naught, a 1 and a 2 and see under what condition a naught, a 1 and a 2 are going to be positive. So, the question which we are going to answer in the next class is, is it possible for a system to be unstable, for a vehicle to be unstable? If so, under what condition the vehicle is going to be unstable? Okay. We will finish this class by saying that note what I mean by unstable. If you are going straight, okay, it is possible that if the system is unstable or vehicle is unstable, a disturbance that comes out or comes about in your system may not die down and may not bring you back to your equilibrium position, right. So, that is the unstable case, right. We will now, our job is to substitute A here, write down that expression. We will do that in the next class, okay.